Welcome to Pantry Talk part three, I think. So I've got down all of my um, dry store boxes that were in the right side of my kitchen. I showed you before the left and that was what we went through last time. So this box is mostly pasta and then the other one I showed you is mostly noodles. So these are Bio Asia noodles and I really like these because they kind of mimic um, you know when you buy like cheap ramen and it's so good this kind of is similar those those these noodles are kind of similar to that so i just really like that they keep the squiggly shape and cook them macaroni da -da -da -da. this one was from whole foods i find it really hard to actually find good macaroni shape in the uk it's not what it's not widely available um but whole foods do it and that's just good for like mac and cheese type things and then your bog standard rigatoni. Oh, also, I don't know if anyone knows this trick. But this is like my favorite trick. So when you buy pasta from a box, there's, oh Jesus. So when you buy pasta from a box, this also works with like cereal boxes or anything that comes in a box. You basically squeeze down these edges and then you can fold in the flap. I'll do it. So then you just fold that. So, okay. I find this really hard to explain. That's your box. You basically want to make a V with this so that it closes like that and it cuts into a V shape there. And do the same on the other side. And then with one of these flaps, you're just going to tuck it. This requires a bit of fiddling, but you just tuck it inside. You see there, and it tucks in like that. And then you have a closed box. And then you could just tuck this one, or I tend to usually just actually rip it off because it's not needed. And then you have a closed secure box. Yeah, okay, that was my rigatoni. And then this is tubetti rigati. I always, whenever I go to like a, a any sort of deli or Italian shop, I try and get some interesting pasta shapes and I really love small ones like this and these actually do expand a little bit when they're bigger so they make it's really good to have in like uh anything with chickpeas or uh something very saucy like a creamy pesto pasta or like pasta and broccoli and then this is kind of similar these are much smaller though this is disellini rigati and this would often be in soups and like minestrone type things i think in italy uh, again, I love it. I love the small shapes. I have a lot of small shapes at the moment. Actually, I'm I'm top heavy on small shapes. Uh, it's probably because I've used up all my big shapes. But anyway, and then this one is Fusilli Bucati, which you can buy in Tesco's. It's a lovely shape, and again, really nice for catching like silky sauces. So that's pasta done. Everyone always asks me where I get my pasta from, and honestly, it's all different places. Um, Sainsbury's do really, they have a really good variety of pastas. Um, and then I tend to just get them from, as I said before, like Italian delis. There's a couple, um, there's one on Westbourne Grove that's really, really great. It's opposite the pharmacy restaurant and it does loads of really nice different pastas. Also, you can order loads online these days and it comes like within a couple days, really. It doesn't take that long. And then you can also go to Italy in uh, Liverpool Street, I think it is. But that place, I mean, as much as I love it and the contents that are inside of it, it's quite expensive. And if you go to any other regular small deli, you'll get a much more affordable price for your pasta. Hello, Pooch. Come here. Oh, hello. This is Oscar. Can you see? It's you. Look, it's you. Brief interruption from Cameron. He needs a wee. So I get a quick cuddle with my pooch. Okay, so moving on to the noodles box. So these are, I just buy these from Tesco. Uh, ramen and udon. This one is like, they're thin ramen noodles and they're just quite easy and quick. They're pretty much already cooked. So they just need like a quick like 30 second bath and some very hot water. And then these are the udon ones, which are slightly thicker. Um, you can see under there. They're just the thick ones. And yeah, really easily accessible. I get those from Tesco's or Tesco. 
And then these are so cool. I can't remember what they're called, but, and this is not their original packaging, but they are like that. And they have these ridges along the sides that catch sauce so well. I get these from my local Asian supermarket. It's so worth going into, if you have one near you, or if you don't have one near you, you seek one out. It's so worth going to them to find really interesting noodle shapes, but also other really, really interesting ingredients. And quite often, um, the prices are so much better. Like you can get like a huge block of tofu for like three pounds, like, and I'm talking like massive and like really good authentic miso at miso. I have to stop saying miso. It's been a really, really bad habit of mine. I just keep doing it. It's miso, not miso, uh, as many of, many of my, or I don't even know if they are my followers, but many people say that to me on Instagram that I'm saying it wrong. And then these two, again, from a local supermarket, local Asian supermarket. These ones are black arrow, arrowroot bean thread noodles, and they are kind of glassy in look. And I don't know if you can see on there. I just really loved the way that they look. They're like clear and glass, and I think they'll be really nice with a really sort of salty soy sauce noodle dish. And then these ones are yellow arrowroot and they're similar, just a different color. Uh, I haven't used these ever, so I will keep you posted, but they're a very good find. And then I've got these Itsu ramen noodles. I got these in a goodie bag um, and I haven't used them. I mean, they look good and I'm sure they'll be delicious. I just haven't used them yet. And then these are again, kind of like ramen noodles. Um, I just like to have a good selection of things really. I mean, you never know what kind of noodle is gonna be called for in a recipe. So it's just good to have options. And then this is lasagna sheets. So it should be in the other box, but there's obviously no space. And then I've just got some spaghetti. And then Fusilli Lunghi Bucatini. Now this, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with. It's so cool in the sense that it's got such an interesting shape. But every time I cook it with pasta, like as a pasta dish, it kind of makes, it makes me feel like I'm eating ramen noodles. Like it looks like ramen noodles. So I put it in the noodle box because I figured I could do these with like a really nice spicy gochujang sauce and it would just work a little bit better than it would as a pasta. Life is for trial and error. So let's see how that goes. All right, so that's the noodles done. Too many noodles for my own good. Okay, let's do some oils. Okay, now for the oils. These are kind of a bit of a collection of things really, but these, I use these all the time. So it's kind of oils and sauces. So, What's that with this one? This is really interesting. This, um, this is Curvis Kernel, which is basically uh, pumpkin seed oil and it has the most incredible color. Let me show you. So it's like this dark green almost. Mm. And it is delicious. That on a site is so nutty. Honestly, it's absolutely divine. Although again, I never see this in England. I always get this when I go to Vienna because my brother lives there. Um, and whenever I visit him or whenever he comes here, I always tell him to bring me a bottle because it is just so divine. And then this is hoisin, although I think that should really be in the fridge now that it's been opened, but it's, it hasn't been, so. And it smell, smells fine. Um, hoisin sauce, again, one of those things similar to the teriyaki that I had in the fridge in uh, episode one. It's just one of those really useful things like when you can't be bothered to make a sauce, you just throw it on and you're done. And then, White truffle oil, told you in the last video, I must love truffle, I absolutely love it. And then this is a truffle infused balsamic vinegar. And this was not mine actually, but my friend Soph uh, of Soph's Plant Kitchen, if you don't follow her on Instagram, you should, she's got really good recipe, recipes. recipes. Um, she moved and got rid of it and left it with me and I'm quite grateful because it does actually, as you can see, I've used quite a lot of it. It's really nice, it's just balsamic vinegar with truffle in it. Uh, vinegar, we've got white wine vinegar and balsamic vinegar, very essential for salad dressings. Also red wine vinegar, another essential. These are the, like my top three. Oh no, that's a lie, top four. So that's rice wine vinegar. These are my top four vinegars, like use these all the time. 
I know that's like most of the vinegars that are available, but I do also have apple cider vinegar, but I don't actually use apple cider vinegar that much. So that's that. But yeah, red wine vinegar and, apple, and, and white wine vinegar I use the most in salad dressings and then obviously balsamic vinegar. I use balsamic vinegar more to flavor things, like, um, like add depths of flavor to dishes rather than in salad dressings. I find it gives really good depths of flavor. Anything with mushrooms, very good. This, oh my God, this is literally heaven in a jar. This is, I think it's like 90 year old aged vinegar. Oh my God, and it's so rich and thick. Can you see how thick that is? Like completely coats the jar. Cameron's uncle, Paolo, lives in Italy or is Italian and he lives, or comes from Modena, which obviously balsamic of Modena. And he gifted this to me the first time I met him and I'm literally tre treasuring it. I just use it so sparingly because I don't want it to run out. Um, and I mean, just how cool is that bottle as well? Amazing. And then dark soy sauce, regular soy sauce. I actually, this bottle, I can't even tell you how old this bottle is. I buy from Costco. You can get like a huge two litre jug of soy sauce for like four pounds. It's crazy. So I buy that and refill this all the time because it just works out much cheaper. Um, I do a lot of like stuff like that with Costco. And then that's just another teriyaki. Ponzu, which I absolutely love. You should definitely seek this out and find it. I know it's a little bit of a strange or like, not strange, but maybe not as well known as its siblings like soy sauce, but this is like a lemon flavored soy sauce or citrus seasoned soy sauce, as it said. And honestly, I love it. It's one of my favorite things to add. If you're making a sort of Asian inspired salad, you want to use that instead of soy sauce. It's really phenomenal. And then seasoning for sushi rice. Whenever we do sticky rice, we put that over it and it just gives it that extra flavor. Vegan Worcester sauce. Obviously, I am plant-based. If I wasn't, this would be regular. Um, again, so good for just adding depths of flavor into things like bolognese, anything that's supposed to be meat-based. I use this. Also, salad dressings. Worcester sauce goes a long way in a salad dressing and obviously your standard Bloody Marys. And then mirin, which is sweet rice vinegar, or sweet rice seasoning even. Um, I don't use this that much. I think I'm, I still need to learn how and when is appropriate to use it. So it kind of sits, I mean, I've had this for like, um, probably like a year and a half and it's like only been used that much. And then sunflower oil, which we use mostly just for popping popcorn because we don't have a microwave, which I told my friend recently that I don't have a microwave and she was shocked, but we don't have one and have not had one since we moved in here. I had one when I lived at my mom's, but I didn't use it that often. And also I feel like microwaves are not that great for you. They really ruin everything that you're eating. And then sesame oil. This is my least favorite sesame oil to use. I actually just ran out of the other one. My, I prefer using a toasted sesame oil and this is just pure, cold pressed and unrefined, super healthy. Um, but it just, to me, it kind of lacks flavor a little bit I don't know when I have like toasted sesame oil it's so good drizzled on um like any sort of like vegetables at the end or whatever obviously you shouldn't heat it up too much because it can it can go quite funny um but yeah I find this one it's just a bit meh, and it doesn't add especially when I'm doing like a miso dressing or any sort of dressing that I use to like sesame oil in I feel like it really lacks that depth of like mm, and it's because I'm using this one boring okay Fine, let's move on to the final dry bit. For this, I'm gonna be moving around a lot just because I have everything here and the lighting is really shit, that's better. Okay, so so this is kind of my pride and joy. Um, it is really neat until you get down there. <laughs> um, but so up there at the top is kind of like all of the baking stuff and there are actually labels behind the jars if you can see, so. If I sort of turn that around, you'll see there's a label saying plain flour. Uh, and then these two below are kind of like nuts, seeds, oats, rice, grains like quinoa, we've got buckwheat, uh, chickpeas, dried chickpeas. And then there's like seeds and different rices down here, breadcrumbs as well, puffed rice. Um, and this has all just been over the years, a collection of different jars. And then these ones actually... If you are planning on, say, like doing something like this and you're finding jars really expensive, this is like 
two birds with one stone because all of these jars are old sauerkraut jars um, and they are perfect so I'll show you. This is a small version but this is the jar, the Biona sauerkraut and they come in bigger jars and that's what we've used for all of those. It's just a great way to you know, feed your gut and save your wallet for jars because these are quite expensive. I think these were like four pounds each and then these ones would have been like six pounds each. And obviously when you're getting a collection, it does add up, but I'd, I've, mine has taken a few years to build. But look how much sauerkraut we've eaten. So all of that and then all of that down there. And then down here, we've just got a speaker, bread box or bread bin, and then a uh, salad spinner, the most essential thing ever. You must wash your salad. It literally can kill you if you don't. And then cereals. And then in here, I just recently got sent these and it's all of their Ollie's, Ollie's pretzel things. And I love this cheesy flavor, it's so good. And they're all vegan, happy days. Uh, so yeah, so that is the end of the kitchen tour. I mean, I'll probably do a video eventually on all of the like pots and pans that I use and the utensils, um, but I have people coming to rip out my kitchen uh, in two days time, so it probably won't be for a while. But the next video might be like a process video of the kitchen reno, um, but we'll see, I don't know yet. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next week.